We'll be reading again tonight from Job chapter 29, Job chapter 29 and beginning in verse 21. Job chapter 29, beginning in verse 21. Uh, appreciate all of you for your attentiveness this morning. Uh, Angela and, uh, McMurray really appreciated all of you. She said you were very attentive, and many of you stuck around and asked questions. She was really appreciative of those of you who stuck around and, and bought things at the little store there. I saw several of you coming out with things. She really enjoyed her time here, uh, and I know her time here was uh, very productive in that now you know what we're supporting with We Are Free. Uh, she has a lot longer story. Uh, about how she uh, saw God's hand and how he provided for the land, how God put a lot of pieces together to get her to where she was. You can see God's hand in putting this together. Of course, she was trying to, to keep it in a timely manner, uh, which she did, but I'm, I think she did a great job letting you know. And again, if you have any other question about this, she's going to be bringing us some newsletters uh, on email and getting us some newsletters and trying to keep us informed about what's going on. And that I assure her that if they have any sort of emergency or something that they need some help with quite urgently to give our church a call and we'll be glad to help them out in any way if they have uh, a sudden thing that's beyond their capability to handle financially or, or need some help with something, I assured her that we would, uh, we would be here for them and she appreciated that. Job chapter 29 beginning in verse 21. Would you stand as the scriptures read please? Job chapter 29 beginning in verse 21. Men listened to me and waited and kept silence for my counsel. After my words, they did not speak again. After my speech settled on them as dew, they waited for me as for the rain. They opened their mouth wide for the spring rain. If I mocked them, they did not believe it, and the light of my countenance they did not cast down. I chose the way for them and sat as chief, so I dwelt as a king in the army as one who comforts mourners. Let's pray together, please. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the details of such an ancient book as the book of Job. Help us to get the truths you want us to have today in our lives, in our week ahead. Father, in, uh, instill in our hearts uh, your truths and your ways for us to live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. It's quite obvious, Job before he got so sick, before he lost everything, before he had to drop out of circulation with society and, and drop below the radar, he was quite an important man. Uh, it speaks of his importance earlier in the chapter as he rose and went through the gate of the city and people stood in his presence. And he says people waited on him to speak. And, of course, we understand that... Uh, his character as one who worshipped and feared God and shunned evil is seen in his actions. And I want to go through them again because there's, there's something that we tried to nail home this morning, but I think all of us are going to come to an agreement on this passage right here in verse 12. Uh, he simply says, Because I delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless and the one who had no helper, the blessing of the perishing man came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind. I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor. And I searched out the case I did not know. I broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked the victim from his teeth. Here's a man who was a helper to the helpless, a hero to the victim. And we mentioned the fact that these are the kind of men we should be. These are the kind of people we should be in our cause for the Lord. But I know that we look at this and we say, you know, this might be a bit out of my reach. This is pretty lofty. This is quite a mouthful. Try to be a hero to the helpless and a helper to those who have no help. The passage of scripture we just read gives us a more attainable goal. It's more easily attainable something that sets the bar for all of us to reach, but it can be a more powerful force than you can ever imagine if we would be more like Job in this way. It's quite a simple statement. It says this, 
After my words, they did not speak again, verse 22, and my speech settled on them as dew. My speech settled on them as dew. If you're reading out of the King James, it just says, my speech or my words dropped on them. But if you look in the Amplified Bible, it goes back to the original Hebrew, and it goes to the original Hebrew and kind of brings out the deeper meaning. What does it mean my words dropped on them? Uh, you know, a lot of things drop. A brick drops, a hammer drops, a big rock drops, and it causes a lot of damage. That's not what this meant. Literally, in the original language, the word in the Amplified Bible says, and my speech dropped on them like a refreshing shower. Those were the effects of the words of Job. The way he spoke to others, the way he treated others, when he would encounter people, his words would be like a refreshing shower. And it was not limited to instruction. But every time he spoke, it was like a refreshing shower. Now here's the question we ask ourselves is, what effect do our words have on the people around us? Not just what we say, but how we say it. What effect does our demeanor and our treatment of others have on the people around us? This idea of words being as dew is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 32. I want to read that verse 2, way back in Deuteronomy. And these are the words of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2. Let my teaching drop as rain, and my speech, any speech, let my speech distill as the dew, as rain drops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. Now, we, we do know, of course, as we mentioned, what kind of effect the showers have on the grass. Well, the most uh, dramatic example, of course, is in like, Mid-July. Mid-July, of course, maybe we've had two or three weeks without rain. Two or three weeks without rain, and, and the grass has become very satisfyingly dry and brown, not growing at all, don't have to mow it. Then you get a little shower, and what happens? That shower brings it back to life. That shower will revive it. All of a sudden, everything's green again, and everything's growing. And, and Moses said, let my words have this kind of effect. He wasn't talking about grass. He was not talking about vegetables and the herbs. He was talking about people. He said, let my words have these effects on people. Job said, my words had this kind of effect. But Job's friend said the same thing. In Job chapter 4, Job chapter 4, verse 1. Job had three friends to come and cheer him up. And we know how that went. Uh, they didn't anything but cheer him up. But the words of Eliphaz give a testimony of the effect that Job had on the people around him. And the effect that his words had on the people around him. His speech. And as I mentioned, the the character of Job, as we talk about breaking the jaw of the wicked and being a helper to the helpless, we may say, that's so far above my head, I'm not going to even try. But look at what his friend says about the way he treated others. Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, if one attempts a word with you, will you become weary? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Look at this. Surely you've instructed many. And you've strengthened weak hands. Your words have upheld him who was stumbling, and you have strengthened the feeble knees. What a character reference from a friend. 
He looked at Job and said, Job, your words have strengthened people and strengthened feeble hands and, and strengthened knees when people are just about to go down. And your words are what helped them and brought them up. So we realize just how Job spoke to others and what Job said made a difference in the world around him. You see, it is said of Job, he worshiped God, turned away from evil. That's the effect of someone who truly fears God and turns away from evil. We're presented with two options in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. Two options. Two options as we deal with people, people who are easy to deal with, people who are hard to deal with. But we have two options as we deal with all the different kinds of people that we encounter through the day. Some of us encounter a lot more people than others because of, of our, our vocation, what we do, the, what we uh, have to do throughout the week. And some of you may not encounter a lot of people. Some of us do encounter quite a few people. And, and we're going to encounter people of all different types, all different moods. And look at what it says. A soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh word stirs up anger. Two options. Harsh words are easy. Harsh words sometimes just fall out of our mouth, don't they? Sometimes we don't have to try. They just pop out, don't they? Harsh words are easy, but gentle words are healing. A soft answer turns away wrath. Just probably on the same page where you are, you may have to turn one more page over to Proverbs 16, verse 24. Proverbs 16, verse 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Pleasant words are like the honeycomb. You remember back in the book of probably 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, when Saul, the king, instructed all of his soldiers, nobody eat anything until sundown or whatever. It's one of these things when he was in, throwing a temper tantrum. Well, his son Jonathan didn't hear the word, and he found a beehive. He stuck his sword in the beehive, and he tasted the honey. And everybody around him could tell that he tasted the honey because he said, man, your eyes are just lit right up. You can tell the difference in your demeanor. You, you've got a sparkle in your eyes, and you've got, it's just revived you all the way around. We know that that's what happened. The Bible says when we speak to others in a gentle, Christian, godly tone, we can make that kind of difference in their day because harsh words are common. Harsh words are cheap. And for a lot of people, that's all they hear. That's all they hear. And somebody comes along and their words are like a shower. Their words are like the dew. Their words are like honey. And it can make all the difference in their day. Or... Turn that coin around. We can drain every bit of happiness and joy out of somebody's day by the way we talk to them. Now, if they don't know us well, who cares? But the closer people get to us and the ones that are closest to us, those are the ones our words can, can affect more than anybody. And if we let harsh words be our rule of thumb and our guide, well, then that's going to be our whole effect on people around us. But now there's Job. Job strengthened the feeble knees and the shaken hands, and he comforted those who were hurting. And, and it wasn't some lofty, heroic Superman thing that he did. It's just because he spoke in words that were healing. Where does this kind of speech come from? Where does this kind of speech come from? Well, 
Isaiah tells us in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. How specific is he about where this came from? Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. A word in season to him who is weary. Where does that come from? Comes from God. Comes from God. So what should our prayer be every morning? Like the psalmist said, let the thoughts of my heart and the words of my lips be acceptable to you, O Lord, my Redeemer. Every day, let's make it our goal. Lord, turn my words into a refreshing dew or a shower like honey to lift somebody's day. It sounds like a small thing, but as James says, the tongue is like a rudder of a ship, and you can turn somebody's day one way or another. Let's make sure, like Job, our words always turn somebody's day for the better. Is there anything before we close?